Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to have a GI plenary session, oral paper presentation. And <clears throat> we have around two people are not coming, so we have virtually four papers for presentation. And I request each uh, presenter to seven minutes you have to have a presentation, and for three minutes there will be questions by the judges. Yes, so first paper is on gastrointestinal polyps and polyposis syndromes. No, he's there. Uh, syndromes in children, lessons uh, for precision and surveillance. So Dr. Parijit Tripathi is going to present. He is a DM resident from SGPJ Lucknow. So Parijit, please start. Mm. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As Sir said, my uh, topic of presentation. So gastrointestinal polyps are one of the most common non-infectious cause of bleed per rectum in children. Prevalence of colorectal polyps is 6% among all colonoscopies and 12% when indication is lower GI bleed. They are predominantly sporadic and malignant transformation in children is very rare. So we aim to study presentation and outcome of GI polyps in children to compare clinical presentation, histology and outcome among single polyp, multiple polyps and polyposis syndrome patients. Polyposis syndrome we defined as five or more colonic polyps and or small bowel and upper GI involvement. Multiple polyps were defined as two to four colonic polyps. We also studied modality of treatment and outcome in polyposis syndrome patients. So we enrolled patients from 2007 to 2017. We collected data and analyzed clinical laboratory endoscopic histology and follow-up. Polyposis syndrome patients additionally underwent along with colonoscopy, upper GI endoscopy, small bowel evaluation, and yearly surveillance endoscopy, and polypectomies. Ethical clearance was taken. So uh, we divided clinical presentation in two groups. Single presentation was with uh, bleed PR and polyp coming out of rectum, and complex presentation was along with severe anemia, anasarca, intersusception, and diarrhea. And uh, for definition of polyposis syndromes, we used a standard criteria. So in result, total 240 patients were uh, included. 52% were single polyp, 28% were multiple polyps, while 20% were polyposis syndrome. Among polyposis syndrome, 80% were around juvenile polyposis coli, 11% were juvenile polyposis syndrome, 6% uh, of Peutz-Jäger syndrome, and 4% of familial adenomatous polyposis. Uh, when we compared the clinical presentation, polyposis syndrome patients had significantly delayed age of onset and diagnosis as compared to single and multiple polyps. In family history, polyposis syndrome patients, 27% had family history. Two had history, family history of familial adenomatous polyposis, adenocarcinoma colon, juvenile polyposis syndrome, Peutz-Jäger syndrome, and five had family history of unknown colonic polyps. Histology was unknown, basically. Uh, in sim simple and complex presentation, all simple and uh, multiple polyp patients presented with simple uh, presentation, while 50% of the polyposis syndrome patients presented with complex presentation, including severe anemia, anasarca, diarrhea, and intersusception in varying proportions. Uh, when we looked at the distribution of polyps, single polyps are predominantly in rectosigmoid, that is 86%, all were in left side of the colon while 80% of the multiple polyps were in, uh, on left side of the colon. 63% of the polyposis syndrome patients were pancolonic. In histology, uh, majority in all the three groups were hematomatous, while 13% in single polyp, 9% in multiple polyp, and 22% in polyposis syndrome had additional adenomatous changes. Uh, Looking at the dysplasia, around 10% of the polyposis syndrome patients had dysplasia and the percentage of the same was less in single and multiple polyps. Although the dysplasia was low, grow, low grade and focal in all and we did not find any malignant or high grade uh, changes. In follow-up, single polyp patients, 5% had recurrence while multiple polyps, 12% had recurrence requiring polypectomy. When we looked at the management of polyposis syndrome patients, among 48%, 42% were decided to uh, treat surgically and 48% were started on endoscopic clearance and surveillance. Among surgical patients, the indication was a sick patient, complex presentation, pancolonic disease and uh, numerous polyps. While endoscopically managed patients were stable with localized disease and lesser number of polyps. 
So uh, the major group that was juvenile polyposis coli, 17, 17 patients were started on endoscopic therapy. All patients we achieved eradication in one to four sessions. And in follow-up, there was recurrence of 30% uh, among them. 16 patients underwent proctocolectomy, while five lost to follow-up. In polyposis syndrome patients, two patients of familial adenomatous polyposis underwent proctocolectomy. Three in Peutz-Jagger syndrome presented with intersusception requiring resection and anastomosis. And two also had additional colonic polyps for which polypectomy was done. Among juvenile polyposis syndrome, five patients, two underwent proctocolectomy and two were started on polypectomies who are still not eradicated. Uh, then in, when we looked at the overall surgeries performed in the polyposis syndrome, among 23 patients, uh, proctocolectomy with ileo anal anastomosis was done in 18 patients. Two patients underwent proctocolectomy with end ileostomy, while three of these uh, pure Jagger syndrome had uh, resection of anastomosis. Among these 18 patients of uh, ileo anal anastomosis, 15 ileo anal pouch was formed, and in three, direct ileo anal anastomosis was done. When we looked at the outcome of the surgery, uh, 22 out of 23 had improvement in symptoms and there was rise in hemoglobin, rise in total protein and rise in albumin. One patient who did not improve and continued to have bleed from the stoma had a bleeding disorder. So strength of this study is one of the largest pediatric cohort till date in India. Presentation, management and outcome of polyposis syndrome was studied in 48 children which was a big cohort. Limitations are we did not do genetic studies in the patients and family of polyposis syndromes and capsule endoscopy was not done in polyposis syndrome as for surveillance which is recommended nowadays. So in conclusion, solitary polyps are almost always hematomatous but 13% have adenomatous changes, 3% have dysplastic changes, 5% have recurrence. So and when there is presence of complex clinical symptoms and family history, there is possibility that it can be a polyposis syndrome. Surveillance is important in endoscopically managed polyposis syndrome patients as recurrence is as high as 30%. And surgery is performed when clinically indicated and has a promising outcome in polyposis syndrome. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. That was an excellent presentation. I just want to know in your uh, uh, PJ syndrome, Yes, sir. Uh, how did you evaluate the small bowel? Uh, uh, Entroscopy was done and... Ma'am, uh, colonoscopy was performed, then upper GI endoscopy, and a small bowel evaluation was done by CT enterography. Okay, so no uh, entroscopy was not done. You didn't do up, no, no entroscopy. No, ma'am, enteroscopy was not done for diagnostic purposes. And uh, do you want to uh, change the surveillance pattern for FAP and PJ because uh, you know the problems and things are completely different. Other surveillance, extra intestinal manifest uh, things, surveillance, do you would want to add that or you want to make it as a common surveillance? No ma'am, we need to do the uh, surveillance for the other extra intestinal complications like malignancies that can yeah. happen in the oh. breast and uh, uterus. We did not found any one of them, so I did not discuss them. And uh, in uh, Brown, as recommended, 15 to 18 years, we should start doing ultrasound of uh, uh, pelvic ultrasound for ovaries and testicular examination and breast examination. I think that we should put it separately because your title is surveillance, so that is a completely different uh, entity. So I think in the polyposis syndrome, that so which one you will not survey? Suppose every parent, all single polyps, would you like to ask them to come back? A juvenile single polyp seen in the rectosigmoid, would you ask them to come back? Or? Yes, ma'am. Uh, like that's what I showed that around 13% have recurrence. We will not tell them to come back for surveillance colonoscopy, but to be more vigilant because multiple polyps can formed in their life in uh, and a different time. So if single polyp is there now, if there is recurrent bleed PR, they should come to the doctor rather than waiting for that. There may be a possibility that another polyp has formed. So I just follow uh, a uh, nice presentation. I'm sorry I, I walked in a cafe few minutes Thanks. late into the presentation. Of course, I mean, surveillance in polyps is dependent on the, the characteristics of the polyp rather than the number of the, the polyp itself. For example, if you have more of a chance of a malignant change in it, then you will want to surveillance to, to do it more frequently rather than less yes, uh, frequently. I mean, yes, at the moment, you're kind of grouping them together, yes, which I guess I would challenge 
uh, and say that they, there's, there's many different phenotypes of, of, of polyps and the certain polyposis syndromes that you couldn't possibly leave without surveillance because the risk of malignant change is going to be high. Uh, yes, sir, number is definitely an important, like if a patient had nine polyps in the whole colon, I will do a polypectomy. If the same patient, uh, if another patient is having more than 100 polyps, both will come under the diagnosis of juvenile polyposis syndrome. But the management and surveillance pattern will change. But in children, there is no uh, guidelines that went to surveillance for this repeat colonoscopies. In adults, whatever guidelines we have, that is for uh, looking for the malignant changes and to prevent malignancy. For clearance so, of polyps, we so don't. So I can just, uh, well, I can, I can just add for the... Uh, yeah, you can continue. No, I was just going to say that um, I was going to ask you a question, but maybe I won't ask you a question now because there are some guidance of of uh, which children you may choose to do surveillance more because they are, for example, the genetic diagnosis you talk about may actually yes, guide you uh, yes, to looking a yes, bit more frequently. Yes, and the other thing, just to inform you that there's now uh, three guidelines written by the European Society which should be issued in the next four weeks, um, which will be out for publication on exactly the questions that you're yes, trying to answer today. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Kirpati, for a nice presentation.